Hello again, Peter here with Gadgets Anonymous. Thanks for coming by the channel. And today we are going to talk about one thing and one thing only, solar charging. What would happen if you left this gadget sunbathing outside all day long, nearly sunrise to sunset? Let's talk about that and see how much it charges over almost nine hours. Here we go. All right, we're going on day 19. No, day 18. Today is the 13th of January. The last time I charged the Garmin Instinct Solar was on December 27th. So over two weeks. Just got done eating lunch at this wonderful place called The Brothers, Los Hermanos. I decided not to wear my watch in there, you know, because I eat lunch with a friend. And I left my watch on my dashboard, charging in the nice heat directed towards the sun. So let's see what happened. Focus, Samsung. There we go. So it still says infinity. So we'll do a long press. What? 3%. So it was 3% over an hour ago. Huh, that does not make sense. So we can exit this, go to the solar widget. Maybe I had it angled wrong. See right there, that's showing 100% solar intensity, that does not make sense. I might have to plug this in if I can't get to charge more. If you've skipped ahead or this is the first video that you've watched, I am in battery saver mode. So you do a long press on control, battery saver on. That really helps when charging. That's weird, very weird. Still, great watch, even if it does take a long time to charge in the sun. Outside that very window is the watch in question. It began sunbathing. Did I say begin? It began sunbathing this morning at 8.30 in the morning. Okay, now my wife asked me to not climb out on the roof anymore, so I'm gonna follow her advice. She's been right for, uh, well, decades. So I'm just gonna reach out on the roof. Now I was doing this earlier on a piece of tin foil and it blew away. So I apologize to the neighbor that finds it. That was not intentional. I did not mean to litter. Oh, we have kids singing outside. Lovely. And you can see right there, it's in infinity mode. And that's because we're in battery saver mode. I normally do that when I charge the watch. If we scroll down, we can go to the solar widget and we can see some awesome stats over the last six hours. And if we tilt it just slightly, the solar intensity indicator lights up and lets you know how much sun you're getting. And as you can see, it's almost sunset, but we were getting 100% most of the day right now. Oh, there we go. 10%, we were at 30 and so on and so forth. So let's synchronize this and I'll show you what it looks like in the app. I created a widget on my dashboard. So if I scroll down, all the way down, there we go. There's solar intensity widget and it shows throughout the day. And then you can click on the gear and say, go to full page. And then I can go back. I filmed the video actually several days ago. So I have to go back to January 14th. And as I scroll through the days, you can see huge spikes when I was getting really good solar charging intensity and actually affecting the battery. And then the day uh, I left it out pretty much all day was Thursday, January 14th. Now, when the watch is completely off, it doesn't track the solar charging intensity, but it does still charge. So this is when I turned it on and when I enabled battery saving mode. So here you can see 67, 180. So a little downward plunges here and there when the clouds interfere and then this is zero and so on and so forth but throughout the whole day i mean you can see that huge block of when it should have been charging really quickly and my record is still four percent in one hour uh, i don't know how i got that and then whereas other hours it's one or two percent so there you go that's what it looks like and, and i'm really so this is a really good day tuesday when i left it outside consistently from 10 51 all the way to 16 and i believe on that day it still didn't quite shoot up a full 10 percent even though it was outside for that long so not as fast as i had hoped 
But still, for emergency situations, you know, charging uh, with a solar panel the size of a watch face is still really good. And that's the end. Thank you for watching. Thought I'd do some cool uh, sunset shadows for this video since we were talking about the sun. And uh, oh, let me catch my breath. I just ran upstairs. Whew. Okay, so that's uh, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions about that watch or any of the other gadgets that I'm testing, piffy comments down below. And uh, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again in a few days. Definitely a few days. Goodbye. Oh yeah, let the credits roll for the Paramount Kid. Bye. All right, so all that video was shot on Friday, <laughs> um, and then I wanted to push the watch further. So, sorry, correction, that was all on Thursday. So that was day 20, kind of day 19. And then I kept it going. We drove all the way to Vegas. I'll show you some pictures. And I left it on the dashboard charging and charging and charging. Here, let me show you my notes. So all that was on last week. And then I left it taking a nice big sun bath. So here we, is. Here we are. So at 11.54ish, we took off to Vegas. And it was on the dashboard charging with pretty good sunlight for nearly 400 miles and it went from 15% all the way up to 16. And then it made it to Saturday and all the way to 1830. Uh, and I'll show you the video here. All the way to 1830, 5% and then all the way up until that night. And then sometime during the night it died. And then I woke up the next morning and finally charged it 21 days later. Now, here's the thing. I, I don't think most people are gonna do what I did where they're gonna leave it in the sun just charging, sitting still. Most people are gonna be hiking. It's not gonna be in direct sunlight. And I would even go out during these you know two or three hour blocks and I'd move it so it did get direct sunlight. And I don't think most people are going to do that. But it was an experiment and I was able to get it to last 21 days, three full weeks, just on sunlight. Um, but you have to realize I wasn't tracking my sleep every night, but that might be realistic too. Maybe if you're camping and you're hiking on the Pacific Crest Trail, you're not gonna worry about tracking your sleep because you're gonna be so tired because you hiked all day. I don't know. But uh, just wanted to add that, that I was able to make it almost another two full days after I filmed that first footage. And I don't know if I'm gonna do that again. I, I like tracking my sleep with the same watch and switching back and forth between 
the Garmin Instinct Solar, and my other device, the Garmin uh, Vivo Active 4. Well, that was a bit that was a bit much, and I and most people aren't going to have two Garmin's to do that. But it can be done with some sacrifices, and that's the end of the video. If you jumped ahead, there are chapter shortcuts down below, and that's all. I'll have more on Garmin watches really soon. Thanks for watching uh, this little bonus edition and. 21 days later. Can't can't believe it. It's really nice. You can easily make it a full week with hardly any charging and awesome. Uh, so I did some quick math on a walk that I tested and this is, um, I'll pop his name up on the credits. He asked the question, well, if you're out cycling, would it balance out? And the answer is pretty close to yes. If, you know, depending on how you are in the handlebars when you're cycling, if you had direct sunlight, my best solar charge is 3% to 4% in one hour, and I'm estimating, based off my test, that GPS usage, GPS tracking of workouts, burns about 2 to 4%. So that means you could literally cycle and track your cycling workouts for almost... Not forever, but for many, many days. I hope that answers your question. I'll do more Q&A about the Garmin N6 soon. Goodbye.